from Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of the world. I'm David Gabbard, and this is the Vegas Faces Podcast, where we talk with Las Vegas locals about what it's really like to live in the city of lights. Whether you're living in Vegas, moving to Vegas, or just visiting Vegas and looking for new adventures, together let's discover the hidden gems that make Sin City the most visited place on earth. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Vegas Faces, where we talk to the people of Vegas about what it's like to live in the entertainment capital. I'm David Gavry, and we are here today to talk about what it's like to move your business to Las Vegas. I'm with the lovely Janelle Lanton. She is the founder of Bonnie and Clyde's Barbershop, my favorite place to get a haircut in all of Las Vegas. So let's get right into it. We're gonna get a fresh cut from the best in the biz. Let's go. Let's welcome to Vegas Faces, Janelle. Thank you. Have you ever, oh man, that buzzing sound is gonna sound good on the mic, I'm sure. <laughs> it's all good. We can do this quick. We this can do this right up. You know, this is the first time that we've ever done a podcast while getting a haircut, and I imagine this is probably the first time you've ever done first a podcast time? while getting a haircut. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> first question I have for you really is you moved here from Atlanta. I did. What made you move your business from Atlanta to Las Vegas of all places? Uh, so I wanted to move here for lots of years. I know it sounds crazy, um, but this is such a cool place. Like all this entertainment, all these restaurants, best places. And then you can get in the car and go to National Park, the like right down the street. That would have been a whole plane ride for me on the East Coast. So that's super special. Like all the things are to offer, um, super nice people. Uh, so I was dying to move here. So finally got over here and um, have a barbershop in Atlanta. Really was tired of sitting in the house. I wanted to come meet some locals and really get involved and be in the community. Um, I've always started off every barbershop just like this, where I am there first. It's me. I'm the foundation of the shop because I feel like it's so important to get to know your community. So that's what kind of started this. And it's a, it's kind of my test kitchen, I guess, or the other locations, which is Love fun. It. So yeah, I get to meet cool people. How do you like being in Vegas? What do you, what do you find like difficult about being in Vegas, having a business here? And also like people say like you have like a business advantage by being in Vegas, like from compared to other states, as far as like uh, tax taxes and stuff for like sure. That. Yeah, there's a huge savings on that. Um, was that like part of when you were thinking of moving to Vegas? No. So originally I was just going to sit in my house. I was going to just like, you know, I was yeah. going to just run the other shop remote and be at home working. But uh, I was like, how am I going to meet Vegas? You know, like I'm here in my house. What was so, it about like, okay, you're in Atlanta and you're like, were there other cities that were also on your list? Nope. And it was always Vegas. Just Vegas. Why? Um, because I love camping and hiking. And wow. it was like in the mountains. I don't care about the beach. The mountains like are special. And it felt like home every time I'd come to visit. It felt wow. like I was like leaving a little piece of home back here. Wow. So it just felt like home almost immediately, which sounds probably silly to feel like home in a place you've never been to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just can't believe it. Like you can sustain yourself. So what I mean, like there's all these places like you can go down the street and there's this show that's world renowned and some of the best restaurants in the world. But you can get in your car and be out in the middle of nowhere. That's, that's not a usual thing. That doesn't happen. When you go camping or hiking or doing some other sub interest in, in the East Coast, like someone owns that land. So you uh -huh. pay for your campsite, right? Or it's somebody's, it's Joe's, it's not, whatever. So having just like open state land, mountains, like you walk out of a, a Walmart and there's a mountain range, like you guys are <laughs> kidding me. You know, like that's not a reality anywhere else. So when people are like, oh, Vegas, okay, or it's this or that, like, have you been other places? Yeah. Because this place is spectacular. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And for you to know that about the mountains, most people just know the Strip. Oh, yeah, no. Like, there's people that travel on business to Vegas for, like, the last 20 years, and all they know is the Strip. Right, and so I got I've a lot of I've never even been to, like, the Hoover Dam, even. Right, which is awesome. So it's everyone like right kept there. going, why are you moving to Vegas? And they go straight to the Strip. I'm like, there's a whole other area. You know, like, we went uh, to visit. We went to Death Valley. I was oh, yeah. in love. Uh, Zion did it for me, Bryce Zion's Canyon. Zion's great, oh my god, Oh my yeah. gosh, but ghost towns? Ooh, okay. Really into ghost towns. I don't mean like spooky ghosts, I mean like abandoned mining towns. Like where, towns. like any names that you can uh, think of? I think it's called Rhyolite or Rhyolite. Okay. 
just like shambles of random parts of the town. And then wow. at the end, in a perfectly intact casino. I mean, like you could walk in. It's dilapidated, but like you can wow. walk in at any moment and like stained glass still like, wh what? <laughs> too, too much moisture on the East Coast. That's not going to happen. Wow. That, that guy would never stay up. So um, the history is so distinct to this place. Yeah. It's newer history, but it's still history. Yeah. It's a rich history that's not that long ago. Yes. And you can go, like, see it and really interact with it so much. And even, you know, the mob stuff or whatever. Uh -huh. Like, it, it's pretty alive and well and intact. And you can talk to a great grandma that, you know, maybe had some interactions. Mm -hmm. So uh, Vegas is a distinct cool place. And I think people are missing out on m things outside the Strip. Yeah. And what brought you to Vegas? Um, I was in my 20s and I thought I was going to be a poker playing comedian and yeah my, my parents we, we got along well for, for a number of years so i met your mom she's cool though yeah, yeah, we're, we're great cool. thankfully now we're uh, we're amazing but yeah i mean i you know i kind of just like wanted to do my own thing blaze my own trail and um playing poker in my 20s brought me to vegas numerous times to where uh before it got crazy expensive to like rent a car i was like always renting a car driving around exploring hmm. and uh probably had like an adventurous side too i was always like i want to see like more of, of this city so it started off with like hoover dam and and like red rock canyon and then it's like what is this mount charleston place about like what's going oh on God. over there that place. you know like not just lake mead but like willow beach and and then like you said yeah zion's only like two and a half hours away uh same with death valley Sedona, Arizona is beautiful. It's oh, like I'm within five go. hours. Oh, yeah. if you love mountains, you gotta go there. Grand Canyon's within three to five hours drive, depending on which part of the Grand Canyon. So, um, yeah, I think just like that adventurousness, oh, yeah. in addition to like Vegas just has that like special, like everyone feels it. The second you land in Vegas, there's like a, there's like a vibe. Yeah. There's like an aura in the air mm -hmm. <laughs> that you're like, wow, yeah, I'm in Vegas. And I just, Absolutely. That just did it for me. Absolutely. When you say you're a poker player, like, what does that mean exactly? You know? <laughs> yeah, I think for me it was just like, at the time, I'm like 22, 23, 24. I just didn't want to get like a real corporate job. So I was like, oh, I'll just do this. And while I was doing it, you, you rack up all these like casino points and casino dollars. And, you know, now next thing you know, like, oh, you can get like free flights and free hotels and come to Vegas whenever you want. So that's kind of how it happened. For me, and then uh, when I was dating Mary, she was like, "Oh my god, like I can get like a Swarovski necklace <laughs> like, anytime I want." <laughs> Wait, so did you get her one? <laughs> All the time, yeah. Like, cause like I don't know, uh, by myself, I really wasn't like using the points. It really wasn't until I met her that she even like brought it to my attention. She's like, "Wait, so you like you swipe your card, like you clock in like how many hours?" I was like, "I don't know. It's probably like forty hours a week, maybe more." She's like, "What?" Like how, how much like do you get per hour? I'm like, oh, it's like two bucks an hour to sit at the poker table. So she basically, long story short, she went through my finances, <laughs> my casino finances. And she was like, wait, so what are you going to spend this money on? Like now that you know me. <laughs> so, Smart, man. Because I want, I want a necklace. I want a bracelet. I want, a, I want this and that. I'm like, yeah. Do you want to go to Vegas too? Like we can pretty much go anytime we want. So that, that's how we ended up in Vegas. And then, oh, really? uh, and and then convincing Mary to move here, I mean, you can't just take her to the strip. Like, so I took her to all the places you mentioned, and the same thing. She was like, I did not know any of this existed. Well, what was the turning point? What was the place that made her fall in love and go to Vegas could be home? Uh, Valley of Fire. Have you been there? Yes. Valley of Fire is so gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, they're all great. They're all great. So there, but that one's. Yeah, that yeah, that was like Such okay. Like I can get used to like all the sun and all the beauty and. Um, and not just like, I mean, the strip is fantastic. We love the strip. Like I'm not anti oh, too, the strip, yeah. but there's so much more to this town too. Was your husband, like, was he the one that came up with the idea for Vegas? Yes. Okay. Well, I, I had mentioned I'd always wanted to live here and I would make jokes, not jokes, right? Like, oh, we're going to live there. Um, so it was our anniversary coming up and, uh, we planned a trip out here. Mine was our second trip of the year. It's problematic, right? I couldn't stay out of Vegas. And, That's uh, so funny. Yeah, and so he, he goes, hey, uh, when we're out there on uh, our honey, I mean our uh, anniversary trip, 
I might, uh, okay, no, so I have a, I have an in-person interview. I'm like, for what? He was like, a job, <laughs> you know? So I, I was like, I'm sorry, I'm not computing. So, like, he just went and surprised me and went and was like, let's, let's do this. Like, your dream dreams, you know, you don't have to cut hair at the barbershop in Atlanta anymore. Let's take this opportunity. You're going to get sucked back in. Wow. Learn to stay out of your business work when work on it and not be in it. Mm-hmm. And let's really take the dive. Wow. So he, it was the complete initiator of it. I had given up on it. I was like, it's not going to happen. That's okay. Wow. But he revived it and, you know, and then we bought a house two days ago. So like, you know, we're in it. We're in it. Yeah. And now like being a Vegas local, like, is there anything that maybe before you moved to Vegas, you thought would be different, um, good or bad? Like anything where you kind of had like your own vision of what it would be like to live here versus what it's actually like to live here? Yeah, it's a lot more normal than I expected. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know it sounds silly, but um, I think I expected more like debauchery and people like that. But there are people who are really into shenanigans everywhere. There are really motivated people everywhere. There are really disciplined people everywhere. People are truly just people. Yes. However, the thing that shocked me, though, was how incredibly polite human like interaction in public is here. Are nice out here, yeah. huh? Yeah, they're so nice. Like, I'm just trying to get milk, and I reach in, and the guy's over there says, like, Morning, how are we doing? <laughs> Never would have happened in Atlanta. He'd be like, You'd be on your way and be quiet, you know? So, it is like a small town vibe here, even though it feels like yes, a big city. That shocked me, yes. Like, yeah. what's the population here right now? It's like less than three million, but something like 40 million visit the city every year, which is insane. That's probably why it always feels so different. Like, the pace seems different in the in the mm-hmm. in the population. But, um, yeah, so um, in Atlanta, there's, like, I think we're close to 8 million in Greater Atlanta. Wow. So it's a lot more people, but um, I don't know. Yeah, it seems like a much smaller town here, and I, I actually kind of like it. It has all of that, but with all of, like, the any kind of big city features, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's wanna, been great. I want to ask you about, like, not just your barbershop business, but you have a really interesting thing going on where you serve whiskey at the mm-hmm. barbershop and like not just like any whiskey like these are like hard to find bottles like you're really into whiskey which really? is amazing yeah. like that's like a that's hard to find because you can find barbershops that serve alcohol like that's mm-hmm. you know oh, yeah. in this town in vegas like that's that's a thing but you kind of have this like special niche of like these like you know devoted whiskey fanatics <laughs> that um that really connect with with what you do here with um, the types of bottles that you find. Like uh, for me personally, you know, we're we're all in like the same whiskey, um, Las Vegas whiskey drinkers on Facebook, on Facebook. And, uh, and I'm like, oh wow. Like she has like the, the Weller antique bottle. Like that's, that's a hard to find bottle. Like that's really cool. Like I'll go get a haircut there just to try it. (laughs) And you do it because you really, really actually like enjoy and respect whiskey. Like it's not, it's not a gimmick, you know, like it's it's sincere. It's That's like you, I mean, the place is called Bonnie and Clyde. It's like, can we get, maybe go into like that a little bit on how you got the name and like uh, the inspiration behind it. So I got really obsessed with depressionary gangsters. Um, I watched Public Enemies, you know, with Johnny Love Depp. that movie, yeah. And I was like, there's no way. This has to be Hollywoodized. Started doing research, then started like reading Dillinger Days, like went way back to all the 1960s and 50s accounts of what actually happened way down a rabbit hole then went on this adventure i decided i was going to go to um uh all the places where things had happened so i went to chicago went to the biograph where they shot dillinger wow. then i came here to the mob museum and so i got really into all of that so my thought was always like oh bonnie and clyde's should have like a cool prohibition uh depression or a vibe um because at the time, right, lots of like cops and the general public were protecting those people. And it's one of those really clear indicators like um, uh-huh. people live in gray. Black and mm-hmm. white is rarely, you know, the reality is these people were uh-huh. protecting and rooting for these criminals uh-huh. because they felt like they had been robbed by the system and the banks. So I think it fascinates me. Also, I'm real boring and by the book. So it's like so <laughs> far from my personality. So I was like, oh, Bonnie and Clyde's like, what a fun name even though terrible humans um so i did that and i wanted a whole vibe with it the old school traditional thing and then i wanted i love bourbon so much um so i wanted to do that but i was like all right i'm gonna have to commit to a theme make it consistent um because to be honest (laughs) 
I have to be able to afford to buy these really nice bottles because <laughs> you know it is a lot more these are pricey. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to find, and because it's hard to find, the prices go up. You know, yes, like anything, and, right? and they range, and yeah. like you have to go to a you know sometimes at a, to a little meetup, if you yeah. will, to go grab your bourbon. Oh, some of some of you guys, whiskey folks out there, some of y'all are nuts waiting in line night before, like <laughs> camping out like it's a concert. For like <laughs> for like a bottle that like is really hard to find, which I get it, but also I'm like, oh man, that's I've done commitment. It before, that's commitment. Judgment. I've done it before, yeah, and I'm like, what am I doing here? And I'd be like, <laughs> I don't care about falling allocated bottles, but you know, I get FOMO. I'm like, oh. well, the old right? fence, it's right there. It's Might so as well. Funny. I need to. So yeah, so I thought it was like this will go the whole theme, and um, I just I loved sharing bourbon. I love it because it's like a whole community that comes with it. Uh -huh. um, it really is. It's yeah, a nice community too. People get too. excited. Yeah. They're like, this is special and they understand the craftsmanship that goes behind it. Like going to the um, the bourbon trail and finding out like the actual artistry of it and all the history, like you get excited and then you really show a stranger immediately, right? Like, hey, this is a gesture. Yeah. It's a, it's an instant bond. It's an it instant is. bond to understand each other and you're both excited about it and this is a special <laughs> thing I'm sharing with you. Uh, it just builds community quickly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just nerding out on whiskey. It's so fun. It's like so silly but so fun at the same it time. It is. What was the thing that got you into it? Because like you just mentioned you started to dabble. What was like the thing you're going, I think I'm going to try it out. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if we were to go back to like college, right? Like we would always buy like Evan Williams, nine ninety nine. What, what is it? Just like the black label Evan Williams, because yeah, it was like yeah. it was like half the price of Jack Daniels, and so we were like, all right, well, it looks like Jack Daniels actually, like the label. It's like very similar. Yeah. And then, uh, so you know, from that to like Wild Turkey one hundred and one, but not knowing anything like or even caring. It was more about just like I just want to get drunk mm -hmm. for cheap, right? Like that. Those were those days. Good deal. The, <laughs> and then uh, I guess probably somewhere when I moved to Chicago. I'm in the comedy world in Chicago and I, I want to feel cool and like, you know, mature and distinguished. So now I'm ordering, you know, whiskey on the rocks. Like, a, it was Jameson is kind of what like was really popular in Chicago um, at the time. It was just always like, ooh, Jameson on the rocks. Like, he's a, he's a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jameson was like, like yeah. the tickets are cool. Yeah, it was just, but it was like, oh, if you or like it was, if you drank it straight or if you drank it neat, oh, forget it. If you're if you're drinking it neat, like, oh yeah, he's he's a badass. And so yeah, I guess um, you know that's probably how it started. And then from there, uh, Chicago to the Bourbon Trail is only like a five hour drive. So that was like a weekend, like fun little weekend trip to go with friends oh, to, cool. to see like the Bullet Distillery and Wild Turkey Maker's Mark. Got to like dip the bottle in the wax. Ooh. You know, like uh, exit through the gift shop type of thing. You want to yeah. buy a bottle and we'll let you dip it in the wax for like an extra 30 bucks or whatever it was. I would have done it. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, so from there it was like, oh, okay. You know, and it was still, I was still young enough to where I was like, oh, I just want the samples. Like, just give me the samples. Like, I still didn't really, really care that much, but it was like more than, than I guess the college age. So I guess I'm maturing very slowly. And then eventually... <laughs> Um, probably during COVID, just like a lot of us, right? Like we were just bored and um, had no place to go. So we'd have like friends come over, everyone had a bottle. What are they, we call them like bottle shares, right? Yeah, bottle like, shares. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and again, like we think we're like these connoisseurs, like, hmm, I, I get vanilla on that one. Or like, like, we don't, I don't, I don't know. All I know is like, I either like it or I don't like it. So um, from I there- I love that about you. You're not pretentious at all. You're like, it's yeah. good, it's bad. <laughs> Some of these are like, oh, it tastes like a grandma's oatmeal cookies. I'm like, no, it doesn't. It just tastes sweet. But like, <laughs> but maybe it does, maybe it does. I'm not shitting on anyone who, who acts like that. I was like, but, I'm totally that. <laughs> I'm like, did you get oak, right? Yeah, <laughs> and, good for, and good for you if you're able to do that. And so it's just, like you said, it goes back to the community thing. Um, it just, it, it's like an instant bond over something that is like it maybe seems silly to others, but it's it's a it's a fun silly, and um, it kind of brings me to a question of because just like anything, right? No matter what city you're in, what you're saying, like there's good people, there's bad people, no matter where you go. Um, being a barbershop that serves alcohol, do you ever like run into like shady characters? Any people that come in just for the alcohol? They might ask for five glasses when it's like, hey, hey, we're here to get a haircut. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, like anyone that acts out of yeah. line, and like because you're almost like. Yes. You're almost like a like a like a hybrid of like a bartender almost mm -hmm. doing this. So what's what are some of like some of the ugly times? Ooh. Some of those like I will like get like people try it once or twice. So can I have a little more? Uh, absolutely not. 
but I hope you enjoyed your one port because that's what I can do yeah. and the liability of what I can do. Um, yes, I've had people come in and just really play it cool. This is mostly the shop in Atlanta. Here, everyone's behaved really beautifully. That's nice. But um, come in and then help themselves because oh. there's a waiting room we can't see. So I've walked in and they're just heavy pouring it and I'm like, so just let you know, absolutely not. You know, <laughs> like, I got to pour that for you. Um, they picked up like my Weller glasses, like etched, you know, and I, oh, yeah. No. And again, I'm a little pretend. Yeah, like stuff, stuff I can't just go pop in to Buffalo Trace and go grab. So anyway, uh, that. But um, and then they also they'll do that. I've also people just come in and like act cool and then have their glass and turns out they're already uh, a bit much. And then we Uber them home. Uh, oh yeah. wow! This only happened once or twice. Um, you know, some people people try it out. Um, no, people that have really acted up um, have just done so on their own accord. But that's probably for another day. Like if that's yeah. too in depth on the <laughs> on the poor behavior on their own. But so far, that's it. Yeah, people try to sneak up extra stuff. People try to pour in. Wow. I've had people try to you know maybe sneak a nice bottle out. You know, like I had a Weller foolproof. Someone was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought it meant it came with a free bottle of bourbon." <laughs> I was like. No, Sarah, there's no way I could charge you enough for you to take that home and oh, cut no. your hair. So he was trying to make his way out the front door with the Weller foolproof, which I, I get it. It's hard to find. But that was about it. Oh, um, yeah. You have yeah. like another layer because these bottles are so hard to find. Yeah. You got people that want to take them too. So, oh, yeah. In Atlanta, they're like put up in separate areas. But again, here, honestly, everyone's been on their best behavior. Everyone's like, you know, some people have asked for an extra one and then it's a no and then we call it a day and they are totally understanding. Everyone's very good understanding. They don't want to ruin the fun for everyone. So everyone follows the rules. So <laughs> and it's like, and you do men's haircuts. Like you don't Only. do women that take no. like four hours for their hair. No, so it's like, I can't. how many drinks can you have in 30 minutes? I can't do your wife's hair. Like, I don't know how. I don't want her to go home and cry and then you got to deal with it. And then she's mad at everyone, both of us. I just, I don't know how to do ladies hair anymore. Oh, that's practice. so funny. I'm just picturing the guy that comes in and is just like downs the first glass. He's like, all right, let's get started. They do. They'll <laughs> shoot it. But the best is like, oh, I know tons about bourbon. And then you're like, oh, great. What would you like? And so sometimes they, they'll get you. And then you'll give them this really amazing bottle, which again, I shouldn't care. I shouldn't. But in my heart, I'm like, oh, ah, but it doesn't feel I, right. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, oh, I went through so much ever. I hope you loved it. That was like a really special bottle, you know? So yeah, sometimes they do. They shoot it down. They keep it moving. Oh my God. <laughs> like it's Jameson. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, but that's like most drinkers, right? Most drinkers just want to get drunk. Uh, I mean, if we're being real versus yeah, like, we're, sure. we're like a subset of people that we are like, hmm, we smell it and we like take a small sip of it. Like, I feel like most people, I mean, I'm like this with coffee. I could care less where the beans come from. I could care less about the altitude and the region. Like, I just need to wake up. <laughs> like, I just want to wake up. And so I think some people are like that with alcohol. They're just like, hey, I don't really... Like they, you know, they'll mix it with juice, whatever they got to do to just down it so that they can feel it. Most people just want the feeling of it. And uh, why, why do you think we're like that? Why do you think we care about the taste and the, <laughs> the oakiness? And like, and why, the, the oakiness. why are we so weird about, <laughs> about tasting whiskey? Because we can have both. You can have both. Like, you know, first of all, I don't think we're all like everyone <laughs> like, you know, do keg stands anymore. So like the event is uh -huh. the social aspect and having the drink. So I think it becomes more exciting to sip on all, like it, the event isn't the after effects, I feel like the whole process. So it's like, why not enjoy it in the process of it? You know, we're too, we're now, it's too loud and here years old anyway. <laughs> so it's like, you might as well enjoy the conversation over like a nice cocktail or like a really good bourbon. To me, that is the event. I think that's why we like that. Well said. Yeah. So speaking of, since you can't let people leave with a bottle, <laughs> uh, but you do do giveaways. I do. Why don't you talk about that? Oh, you're right. Okay, so I do raffles. Um, uh, I've had some some bones to pick with like my industry, right? And it's always like the first time guest gets the incentive, right? Uh -huh. And the first time guest, and obviously you have to build a business off steady prices. But what's a cool equalizer, right? Uh -huh. Is having things that are special for everyone to participate in. So obviously it builds up a business well. Like you give me a review, cool. We're giving you a raffle entry. Pre-book your appointment. I'm teaching you to get into a good habit. Be on top of your haircut, right? So then you don't yell at me like, there's no spots open. Um, kind of like today. Anyway, that being said, it's a fun way to still incentivize and do something cool for the people who've been loyal and regulars. So we did a 12-year Weller. 
Um, we are on the Herbs and Rye gift card right now. It's a uh, hundred dollars to Herbs and Rye. Yeah. Um, and then it's a um, great restaurant, by the way. I love that I spot. Saw been. I'm excited. Oh, Everyone it's so good. About it, so I took, oh, the yeah. food, steaks, great whiskey selection there too. That's like just a beautiful bar in general. It's like yeah. a nice low key spot. It's really good. It's yeah. a it's a local. It's it's hard to get in there. You need like a month in advance reservation. I walked in. It was it had been open for ten minutes, and they're like, "You're so <laughs> cute. You can't come in here yeah. today." You know, so so lesson learned. But I knew it would be special for all the guests. So yeah, that's a great um, spot. Yeah, I try to do stuff they they get excited about. So we, we do do a lot of bourbon raffles, obviously, because that's my crowd. Um, if anyone has any suggestions, let me know because could always use one in the comments um, yeah. leave it in the comments guys yeah let me know like it could be so i've given away golf stuff so like in atlanta we've given away like scotty cameron putters and wow. drivers and we've given away private golf lessons um bourbon we've given away delta gift cards um wow. yeah we've all kinds of fun stuff so i want to make it something everyone gets excited about yeah, okay. But yeah, so I guess you're right. That is all you can leave with the bottle bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please don't take Janelle's bottles, but sign up for her raffle. Yeah, yeah sign up for the raffle. How do you get into the raffle? One haircut equals one raffle ticket? So new customers will get an entry. Okay. Um, you can, if you're an existing guest, anytime you pre-book your next appointment when you're in, that's three entries. Anytime you scan, we have a code you can scan, you do a Google review, Yelp, anything, that's three entries. Um, if you share at all on Facebook, posting anything, that's an, that's entries. Um, and then finally, referrals. Referrals are like 10. Yeah. You bring me someone, wow. you say, so and so sent them in. That's, uh, there's no better compliment, you know, so that gets tons. And then it all gets drawn um, out of a little box blind so that there's no. I'm not partial to anyone, mm -hmm. and it's just getting picked. And you do the you do the drawing like on, like you film yourself doing the drawing. I do. I do live on Facebook normally, um, and then I will call the winner, and then I always pick a backup because sometimes that has happened where someone mm -hmm. didn't want to pick up their prize. Oh. Um, they just you know maybe they weren't golfers or whatever. So yeah. Okay, that works. All right, you hear that, guys? Get into the raffle. Yeah, go on in. And how many raffle tickets for a podcast? <laughs> You know what? We're going to have to talk about that one because it was a good one. <laughs> I wasn't even prepared for that many half But, but uh, <laughs> you know, like before we wrap up, like where can people find you and like, um, you know, socials and all that fun stuff? Uh, okay. Yeah. So please keep in mind that I have multiple locations attached to every, um, every um, social outlet. So www.bonnieandclydebarbershop.com. You can Google it. It'll show Las Vegas, Buckhead, Midtown is our third location. Um, you can go on Instagram, Bonnie and Clyde Men's Salon. Yes, we market a little bit differently each platform. Um, TikTok, we have a TikTok of really funny, stupid videos. Enjoy. Um, I'm the bourbon barber here. And then in Atlanta, we're Bonnie and Clyde's. Um, and uh, we got some, some fun stuff on there. So You have some funny it. content too, by the way. She does these funny <laughs> characters. Like we're, it's like, Guys it's like a character it. that like every, we all know this character, whether it's in a barbershop, whether it's like a coworker. Like, it's just like these universal, like, funny. I mean, we, we, I've been that character before. Like, I feel like we all <laughs> have at some point. So, uh, go check her out. It's really, really funny stuff. And before we close, I'm interested also, or I've been wanting to ask, like, do people ever request other alcohols besides whiskey here? Yes, they do. So much so that now we have tequila. Um, so I keep that around and then scotch. Now I'm not, I'm not really, um, I'm not knowledgeable on scotch and tequila, but I will keep something because I do want everyone to feel like they get a special treat here. Um, so yes, we do have that. I will probably throw in one or two more things. Um, I like to kind of rotate other things in and out, but, yeah. but bourbon will always be the foundation of it and will always be the most extensive part of the collection. That's a good question. If though. someone had to ask you of all the whiskeys, all the bourbons you've tried, do you have like a absolute go-to favorite? <sighs> like a day-to-day -day drinker, like a special. Just like what comes to mind, like your all-time favorite of all the ones that you had. Oh boy. Okay. Like I... for me, I think it's just like makers, like anything that's made by makers, or maybe it's that's perhaps right. weeded. I think you know, so Weller, we Weller, that, yeah. maybe even. So I don't know. For me, it's like it's it's that profile: the the wheat, the sweet. So yeah, maybe if it's not an individual bottle, maybe it's like a type. Uh, I would go with that. So my like, you know, holy grail bottle I love that I've tried like twice in my life is probably the Weller CYPB. It's exquisite. Um, so that that's great. And CYPB stands for? Oh, I don't know. You're putting that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the Wait, spot. Wait, what is it? 
I don't know. I was asking you. <laughs> I know it's like uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll know. But it's CYPB like the, what does it stand for, yeah, guys? It's the white and gold label. <laughs> I just know I had it like, and I was like, I'm gonna get it. Oh, so good. But I have not attained my own bottle. I think it's like something your personal bottle, maybe. It's like perfect. celebrate your personal bottle. I'm going with that. Okay. I think it's good. that. I thought it was your perfect bottle or something. Oh, like maybe. That. Like yeah, the most that's perfect probably bottle it. or something. I, I don't know, something like that. Celebrate your perfect bottle. Yeah. Comments, please. Yeah. Someone tell help us. Because <laughs> I don't know. I just know it was scrumptious and I just well or for life and then um I like honestly like EH Taylor's small batch before it was like nine million dollars was like go to <laughs> that or Eagle where I'd switch off and I was like an everydayer so it used to be an everydayer not anymore but that's pretty high up and if we're just trying to go somewhere Buffalo Trace I am very Buffalo Trace loyal yeah all day so every it was day. like Blanton's like is, Blanton's is yeah. okay. It's fine. It's a cute bottle. It tends I to get have overhyped, it. Overhyped, I did right? just get some actually for the shop, so you guys are welcome to the Blanton's. But um, personally, for me, I'd pick Eagle Rare over Blanton's any day. Yeah, I would you too. Just saw, right? I would it's a too. Good, solid yeah, board. yeah. And I like something about aged in my mind immediately tells me it's better, even though I know that's not necessarily true. But in my limited scope <laughs> of I mean, whiskey, I'm like, ooh, nine years. It must be like even better than the. The other one, but I, uh, I mean, sometimes that is true, though, you know. So, but I, I don't know. I do like Scotch a lot, and Scotches are usually aged like minimum nine years. Sometimes a lot really? of them twelve, eighteen. I mean, there's some crazy ones, twenty five years. Yeah, but um, again, I'm not a professional by any means. But to my understanding of Scotch, the minimum is like twelve years, like maybe eight years. Like there's some, like Lagavulin eight, I think, as well as sixteen, but. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that applies to bourbon, though. I think because of the the, uh, the new charred oak barrels that it's aged in, I think you don't want to age it too, too long. But again, comments, guys. We need help on age. <laughs> yeah, for real, because I, I don't know. I think... Mm -hmm. I think it more matters is like how it's aged. So like, you know, like, like Pappy's like, and listen, that might be another fight in the comments, but Pappy's is notoriously good for a couple of reasons, right? And like they move it around the Rick house like crazy. So it's not just like it's sitting there for X amount of time. They are okay. throwing everything at it to make sure that the flavor profile is exactly as it's supposed to be. So I think in conjunction with the length of age, it has to be the way they're aging it. So they just like are putting all maximum effort on making sure mm -hmm. it's moving around the Rick house so they get that complex flavor. Interesting. So I, wow. that's my opinion on it. Wow. So before we totally wrap up, um, Business in Las Vegas, yes or no? Should should people move their business to Vegas? Yeah, absolutely. Don't don't walk, run. Like it's such a good idea. The community, people rally immediately. They're very loyal, consistent. I think there's such a big uh, customer service um, population here. They mm -hmm. understand it and recognize it and really appreciate the efforts. So yeah, absolutely. I wish I would done it sooner. Yeah, that hospitality yeah. just like is ingrained in us here in this it town. It is. Like that was the one thing we noticed immediately was not just are the restaurants amazing, but also the service is fantastic. And it's like, yeah, you're in the hospitality capital. Like you have to have it all. Like Absolutely. you won't survive in this town if you don't. So. And it's really lacking other places. Yeah. It really, really is. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, Janelle, before we totally close, I've got to say, uh, this has been amazing. Thanks for letting us do oh, yeah, this. this is great fun. And most importantly, thank you for being one of the Vegas Faces. Thank you for subscribing to Vegas Faces on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok under the name Gavri Group. That's G-A-V-R-I Group. Thanks, everybody. See you at the next episode.